Really, finally, that uh, you are able to uh, see me and hear me. This course is uh, entitled Basic Electrical Circuits. Uh, welcome to the course. I am Nagendra Krishnapura from the Department of Electrical Engineering at IIT Madras. What we will do in this course is to learn about ways of analyzing circuits. Okay, so it's not about any particular circuit or any particular gadget, but a general technique or general techniques for analyzing any circuits, which you can expand to any new circuit that you may come across. Okay. As I mentioned earlier, uh, please feel free to interrupt the lecture by raising your hand, and I'll also try to be systematic and uh, give you time, let's say every uh, few minutes, every ten minutes or so, so that we can have all the doubts clear. Okay. Here is a presentation that sort of outlines what we will be seeing in this course. Okay. In fact, it turns out that in this semester, I am also teaching a course at IIT Madras entitled Electrical and Magnetic Circuits. What I will be talking about in this online course will be only the electrical circuits part of it. Okay. Now, what are uh, electrical circuits? Electrical circuits are uh, interconnections of uh, electrical components and basically they, every electronic or electrical gadget that you see forms an electrical circuit. Okay. And magnetic circuits, just as a point of information, are interconnections of magnetic components. And I think all of you would be familiar with uh, uh, transformers and motors. They form magnetic circuits. Now, in this online course, our focus will be on electrical circuits. And they are absolutely everywhere around us. You will be able to uh, see electrical circuits. You are probably using so many electrical circuits in your day-to-day -day life. Okay. So just as an example, the laptop on which I am uh, making this presentation, uh, your mobile phone, music player, the headphones that I am wearing, all of these things form uh, electrical circuits. Okay. In this picture, you can see an example of a mobile phone which is opened up and it has a number of uh, complicated circuits inside. You build up the circuits hierarchically from uh, simple elements to more complex circuits and they are put together to make the a bigger circuit and so on. So finally, you end up with a very large circuit. Okay. As I was saying, uh, a mobile phone is a circuit, as is your music player and so on. And here I have shown a very large, physically very large circuit on the left side. It is a transformer that is used to bring power to your homes, and that is also a circuit. And on the right side is another transformer. The one on the left side is probably as uh, big or even bigger than this room in which I am sitting and the one on the right side is a couple of millimeters, they are both transformers. Okay. The main point I want to drive home is that circuits themselves come in all shapes and sizes, but there are some uh, methods of analysis that are applicable to all circuits and that is what we will be discussing in this course. So as I said, uh, this course is about analysis techniques applicable to all circuit and it is not any, about any particular circuit. And it turns out that if you look at uh, electrical engineering curriculum in any uh, university, this turns out to be one of the most important courses. Okay, Mainly because it uh, lays a foundation for a number of courses that you will encounter in your uh, electrical engineering curriculum such as uh, networks and systems where you will analyze circuits using more advanced techniques such as Laplace transforms and some of you may all go on to do courses in analog circuits. The things that you learn in this course, the methods of uh, circuit analysis are absolutely essential for that course and also some of you may be studying uh, in detail uh, electrical machines. Again, uh, the, detail, the analysis methods learned in this course will be useful for that and it turns out that also if you want to get a job in electrical engineering, in a lot of electrical engineering com companies, the interviews will start with uh, some basic electrical circuit questions. Okay, so it is uh, by and large a very useful course uh, for your uh, further studies as well as uh, your career and so on. Okay. Now, what are the topics that we will go through? First, we will have a discussion on uh, electrical quantities and elements. Some of you would be already familiar with this. Okay, I think all of you will have some notion of uh, what a voltage is, what a current is, what a resistor is and so on. And also you would have uh, studied both in high school and later uh, some basics of uh, electrostatics and electromagnetics. Okay, 
and the things that we deal with voltages and currents are related to what we study in electromagnetics such as fields and charges okay but we will not deal with uh, we will not go down to the level of uh, fields and charges but we will stay with voltages and currents so in the initial part of this course i will also tell you how these things are related to each other okay then uh, after we discuss electrical quantities and elements we will see how to analyze circuits again uh, at some level for very simple circuits you would be familiar with this uh, but we will see how to uh, scale it up for large circuits which could be arbitrarily large okay now it turns out that there are also certain theorems uh, certain general theorems about uh, circuits which are very useful in analyzing circuits in representing circuits and so on we will discuss those things then uh, we will talk about what are known as one and two port networks it will be very clear what i mean later okay one port means you have uh, one set of terminals where you can apply a voltage or apply a current uh, two ports means there are two such uh, pairs of terminals where you can do the same and so on okay and there are ways of uh, transforming between multiple ways of uh, representing these circuits we will also study those things okay now one of the other uh, interesting things that we will study is the op amp not in uh, great detail but as an ideal op amp uh, it forms a basic network element and from that you can make a number of uh, interesting circuits in fact some of you who may have had uh, building circuits as a hobby would have already done this would have already used op amps what we will do in this course is to lay a proper foundation for that and then if you want to design new op amp circuits how to go about doing that and how to analyze complicated op amp circuits those things we will deal with okay now it turns out that essentially circuit analysis consists of you look at the circuit based on the circuit you come up with a number of equations and then you solve the equations okay now it, if you if your circuit has only resistors then you will end up with a set of algebraic equations and you have to solve that i think you already know how to do that it turns out that you can also make interesting circuits when you have capacitors and inductors in those cases you will end up with what are known as differential equations and some of you may know how to solve it what we'll do is go through the treatment of uh, differential equations the particular kind of differential equations that is constant coefficient linear uh, differential equations that we will use in this course we'll deal with that in some detail so that uh, you are familiar with the kind of solutions that can be present okay now finally we will look at uh, polyphase circuits at least some of you would be familiar with uh, three phase power transmission and so on so we will look at some of those things and see why those things are important and see how to analyze those circuits okay now in this online version of the course we will not be dealing with magnetic circuits but you can look at uh, other resources to get some knowledge about those things okay now uh, as far as the goals of this course are concerned it's very simple you learn circuit analysis and learn how to do it well okay and the way to do it well is to practice practice and practice problem solving now you practice problem solving for many different reasons sometimes you do it for competitive exams where you solve the same kind of problem many times so the next time the same type of problem comes up you don't have to think about it now here it's a little different okay the reason for uh, uh, practicing uh, solving a lot of problems is to uh, be confident enough of solving any other problem it may be of the same type it may be of a slightly modified type or even a completely different type okay any problem that you have to solve you have to be able to approach it with confidence and then solve it so that's why you have to solve a number of uh, different types of problems okay and also more importantly when you solve any problem you have to understand every step of problem solving okay it's not a test of speed but uh, you have to know why you are doing uh, what you are doing so whenever you solve any problem please make it a habit to understand every step and then move on to the next step okay and a sort of uh, uh, secondary goal is to learn about linearity what i mean by this uh, will become clear but a large number of circuits that we will analyze will turn out to be linear what it means is that you apply a certain stimulus you will get some response you apply another stimulus you will get a different response and you combine the two stimuli the response turns out to be the combination of the original responses okay 
Now this simplifies analysis a great deal. It turns out that you don't have to analyze the same circuit many times. You analyze it for one set of inputs. You will know the answer for uh, many other uh, sets of inputs. Okay, in fact, any other set of inputs. So you have to become comfortable with this. Uh, the implications of linearity, how to recognize linearity and exploit it while analyzing circuits. Okay. Now here are some uh, resources that you can use. First of all, as I think was already mentioned to you, these lectures, these online sessions will be recorded and they will be made available to you. In addition to that, you can uh, uh, make note of a URL that I will give you. We, in our group, we record our lectures and you can uh, view those lectures. And one of the courses that we have taught is this electrical and magnetic circuits, which has some overlap with the course that I am teaching now, but uh, is at a quicker pace. So you can use, view those lectures. You, of course, are familiar with NPTEL. I think that's how you came to this course. So NPTEL lectures are also very useful on uh, specific topics. And the VLSI uh, group homepage at IIT Madras, this is also something that you can use to further your knowledge of uh, circuits. Okay. So with that background, uh, perhaps we can get started. I am going to share the journal now. I mentioned uh, some resources. I am going to write down the URLs here. This has uh, recorded lectures on uh, various uh, circuits related courses and you can also see okay. And finally, of course, all of you know about NPTEL. Okay. So, with that background, uh, we can get started with our. Uh, Electrical circuits are interconnections of electrical components and they manipulate voltages and currents in some way. 
Okay. Now I think all of you have heard of uh, voltages and currents. I would like some responses uh, from the participants. What is the voltage? Perhaps you can type it into the chat window. Okay, I've got a number of uh, responses here. Uh, got a number of responses, and basically they kind of fall into uh, two classes. They you say that either the voltage is a potential difference, or uh, it's related to some force that causes current, or that causes electrons to flow. Okay? Now both of these are of course quite correct and I will uh, elaborate on these things. And similarly I would like some responses on what is a current? What is an electrical current? Okay, again I have uh, got a number of responses which say that uh, a current is basically flow of charges. Okay, and some of you say electrons which is quite correct of course. Okay, and some of you also said that it is the rate of change of uh, charges or rate of flow of charges and these things are quite correct. Okay. And in the definition for uh, voltage, some of you also related it to the electric field, which is quite correct as well. Okay. Now, uh, I think all of you know that, uh, all of you have at least heard of Maxwell's equations, which relate electric fields and magnetic fields and uh, charges. Okay. So you have charges that can create electric fields and charges can move under the influence of electric field, they can move under the influence of a magnetic field and so on. Okay. Now of course those are the uh, basic equations which govern uh, everything in uh, electromagnetics including our circuits. Okay. If you also recall uh, from electromagnetics usually it is quite difficult to solve uh, the problems, usually you end up having to do a lot of mathematics. But in circuits things are a lot simpler, the reason I will explain shortly. Okay, We are also dealing with uh, electric fields and magnetic fields and uh, flow of uh, charges under the influence of either the electric field or the magnetic field. But there are some conditions that uh, make our life a lot simpler, we can do things a lot more easily. And our primary variables will be voltages and currents and these will be related to the fields. Okay, but what we usually deal with are not the electric field or the magnetic field, but voltages and currents. Okay. Now first let me take an electric uh, current and electric current usually denoted by I is the rate of flow of charge across some surface. Okay. So you could have uh, some surface, I am showing some pipe like thing and you could have uh, charges flowing this way and the rate of change of uh, charge across the surface 
is the electric current through that surface. Okay. Now a couple of things. I think all of you know that it is electrons that uh, do the flowing. It's the electrons that flow, and electrons are negative charge. So what we are looking at, what is defined as the electric current, is the flow of positive charges. Okay. It's really the negative of the flow of electrons. Now, as far as we are concerned, it is perfectly all right to think of uh, positive charges are flowing, although it is electrons that are flowing, and the direction of flow of positive charges will be exactly opposite to the uh, direction of flow of uh, electrons, which are really the things that are flowing. Okay, it's okay for our purposes to think of currents as a rate of flow of positive charges through some surface. Okay. And also, uh, generally, a very useful analogy for uh, electric current is fluid flow. Okay, so instead of uh, charges that are flowing, you can think of fluids that are flowing in pipes and so on. And for a number of cases uh, which involve general rules about currents, this fluid flow analogy works quite well. Okay. Now, in our uh, uh, particular case, we will not be looking at uh, charges flowing in arbitrary surfaces. We will be looking at currents that are confined to a wire. And a wire is a very good conductor. In fact, we will think of them as uh, ideal conductors, which offer no resistance at all to the flow of current. So, we will be looking at currents that are confined to wires. Now, this is one of the aspects that make our uh, analysis quite simple. Okay. Now, if you have charges in field somewhere, it is not very easy to calculate the effect of fields on charges, exactly how they move and so on. But we will be looking only at electric currents in a wire or through some elements. So, our job is a lot simpler. Okay. So, you may have some wire like that. And you could have a current flowing from A to B. Okay. Now, as I said uh, many times, this really consists of uh, electrons flowing from B to A, but we can think of it as positive charges flowing from A to B. Okay, if the current is in this direction. Okay. Now, we also don't worry about exactly how the charges are distributed across the surface of the wire will be only concerned with the total current flowing through the wire. Okay. And I think many of you know this already. The electric current has units of uh, ampere. Okay. And this corresponds to carrying a charge of 1 coulomb in 1 second. Okay. So, if 1 coulomb of positive charge flows from A to B in 1 second, that constitutes a current of 1 ampere from A to B. Okay. So, here I have shown a wire from A to B and I draw an arrow from A towards B and I mark 1 ampere and that is what this means. Okay, 1 coulomb of positive charge flowing this way. Now, I could also show the exact same situation. Okay. What's the chat dilution you can get equal to water? Yeah, but I didn't get anything exposed so here. So, 
No, I mean, I was saying other things, but. Uh, yeah, it's okay. Okay. It's okay. So I believe uh, things were interrupted for uh, a little while. Uh, what I was saying was that a current of 1 ampere means that a charge of uh, 1 coulomb is carried over a duration of, uh, I mean a charge of 1 coulomb is carried in 1 second. Okay. Now when I have a wire uh, from A to B as I have shown here okay, and mark an arrow from A towards B and write 1 ampere that means that a positive charge of 1 coulomb has gone from a to B in one second. Okay. Now the exact same situation can be depicted by having a wire uh, with an arrow drawn from uh, B towards A and with minus one ampere marked on it. Okay. Now this is something that you have to get comfortable with. Uh, you can depict the current, the same current as positive one ampere going from this side to that side, or negative one ampere going from that side to this side. Now the reason uh, this is important, this looks rather trivial, the reason this is important is that uh, when you solve for circuits, when you start solving a circuit, you do not know which way the currents are. Okay? You will assign uh, some variables i and mark the directions of currents and i could come out either positive or negative and in later cases we will see that it could even be time varying. Okay? Now for you to interpret these results correctly, you should become very familiar with the convention. Okay? What I want to emphasize is that just because I have drawn, a, drawn an arrow from B to A does not mean that current is actually flowing in that direction. It could be the negative of that also. Okay. The value could become out either value could come out either positive or negative. Okay. So that is about currents. So any questions, anything that is confusing about the definition of current and the convention of the sign, we will be talking about currents through wires. Okay. Okay, uh, there were a few questions. First one was, uh, what is a coulomb? Okay, coulomb is the unit of charge. Okay, you perhaps know that the electron has a charge of uh, minus 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. Okay. So roughly speaking, you need uh, 10 billion billion electrons to be flowing to have 1 ampere of uh, current in 1 second. Okay. You should have 10 billion billion electrons flowing in 1 second to have 1 ampere of current. So that is the unit of charge. Now there was another question uh, which was about uh, the current flows only on the surface of the conductor or not. Now we will not worry about that. Okay. Now it turns out that at low frequencies current flows uniformly through the surface of the wire and as you go to higher frequencies it uh, tends to go towards the surface of, uh, uniformly through the cross section of the wire at low frequencies and as you go to higher frequencies it will be only uh, towards the surface of the wire. But for us those, those details are not important at all. We will be looking at the total current flowing through the wire. Okay.
Okay, and there was another question on the flow of current through coils. Now, whether it's a coil or not, uh, current will flow through the wire. Okay, now you are probably asking about what happens due to that current. There will be magnetic fields, but we will not be talking about it at this uh, juncture. Okay, and uh, someone else asked uh, whether any random movement of electrons becomes a current. Yes, it does. Okay, in fact, electrons are moving randomly all the time. And there is a big uh, field of study on uh, noise, which is the electric current due to random movement of electrons. Okay, as long as the temperature is above absolute zero, this will keep happening. Now there was another question on the positive charge. Uh, why we take it that way? So. This is something historical. I think historically people did experiments with electric currents on all kinds of things uh, when it was not known that electrons are the electrons are what carry current. Okay, so they just decided the direction of current as the direction of flow of positive charges, and it should also be noted that in certain uh, chemical experiments it could be some positively charged ions that are actually flowing. Okay, when we have wires, it's only negatively charged electrons that are flowing, but that's not the case in every situation. So it's some arbitrary thing, and that is the historical convention, and we'll stick to that. Okay. Now there are also questions on the AC and DC and so on. So those things we will not worry about. Okay. That is just has to do with how the current changes over time. Okay. So that's not something fundamental. And so that uh, is about those things. And also for us, all the conductors are perfect. Okay. So the conductor itself will not have any influence on the current. Okay, so this is an idealization, and many of the wires that we use, which are made of copper, come fairly close to this ideal uh, level. Okay, so again, we will not worry about the effect of wires at this point. Okay. Now let's. Now let's move on to the other electrical quantity, which is the voltage, or potential difference. Okay. Now what is this? I think again an analogy could be made with gravitational field. Okay. You know that. If you have a gravitational field, this is the. I am showing only a small area, so I am showing it as flat. And you know that there is gravitational field in this direction. Okay. Now, if I place a mass m in a gravitational field, what will it do? Obviously, it will fall in some way towards the earth. Okay. In fact, the gravitational field could be due to any uh, body, and it will always fall from a higher gravitational potential to a lower gravitational potential. And let's say this was at a height h2 above Earth, and the other one was at a height h1 above Earth. When it falls from uh, h1 to h2, it gains. A potential energy, which is mg times h1 minus h2. Okay, so it falls from a higher potential to a lower potential, and while doing so, it gains potential energy. Okay. Now, similarly, if you have an electric field, which is usually denoted by that. And then you place a charge Q it will this is of course a positive charge Q it will fall I mean here I use the word fall not in the gravitational field but in the electrical field okay so it will go from there to there okay it will tend to go and if it does that it will also gain a potential energy
which is q times let's say the potential uh, this electric potential is denoted by v and if this is v1 v2 it will be v1 minus v2 okay so you see that the gravitational potential energy that is gained is proportional to the mass okay and the electrical potential energy that is gained will be proportional to the charge so we leave out this if this charge and mass are property of the body that is falling and the rest of it is a property of the field okay and that is the potential difference okay so the amount of energy gained is equal to the amount of charge times the potential difference between here and there and that is v1 minus v2 okay similarly here in the gravitational case the amount of potential energy gained is the mass of the body that is falling times the potential here minus the potential there which is g times h1 minus h2 so what i want to emphasize here is that that potential makes sense only when measured as a difference of values between two points okay is v1 minus v2 if you just say potential at this point is something that is not a very significant thing okay so you always have to measure this voltage or potential difference between two points and this is true of circuits as well okay now as usual we are not looking at arbitrary fields that are distributed in space and charges falling in this we are only looking at uh, electrons moving in wires or charges moving in wires and the fields will be inside the wires okay so the potential difference the electrical potential difference is very much like the gravitational potential difference the gravitational potential difference acts on the mass and a mass that falls in the gravitational field will gain some potential energy similarly an electric field electric charge that falls in an electric field will gain some potential energy okay so when we are talking about circuits we will not worry about potential energy or electric field we will talk only about the potential difference okay okay it looks like uh, the connection has been broken for some people or the quality has been questionable so what i'll do is i'll just uh, pause the camera to conserve the bandwidth and hopefully things will be better you can give me feedback on whether it is indeed better okay what i was uh, saying here is that uh, i was trying to make an analogy between voltages or potential differences oh yeah video is off no that's what i mean people said uh, okay uh, that okay so so the video is off now by the way uh, <clears throat> what i was saying here was that i was trying to make an analogy between electrical potentials and uh, gravitational potentials that you are familiar with here on the left side i have shown the earth and the gravitational field pointing downwards and if you place a mass m somewhere it will fall down uh, in the direction of the gravitational field and it will gain potential energy it will always fall from a region of high potential to a region of low potential let's say it falls from a height h1 to a height h2 it gains a potential energy which is m times g uh, gravitational acceleration times h1 minus h2 analogously in an electric field here i have shown on the right side electric field pointing downwards if you place a charge q somewhere it will fall that is it will move in the direction of the electric field and let's say it falls from one point where i have marked the potential of v1 to another point where i have marked the potential of v2 it gains a potential energy which is q times v1 minus v2 okay so uh the amount of potential energy gained is proportional to the charge and it is charge times the potential difference just like the amount of gravitational potential energy gained is mass times some difference 
and it's the difference between some quantity at the initial point and some quantity at the final point. So what I want to emphasize here is that the voltage or potential difference makes sense only when measured as value difference between values at two different points. Okay, there is not much significance to saying that the potential at particular point is one volt without saying with respect to what that potential is. Okay, or in other words. You have to say that the potential difference between point A and point B is something. This is something you have to do in circuits as well. Uh, the voltage is always measured between two points. Okay. So in fact, while you are discussing it among yourselves or you are thinking about it, you should always think of two points between which the voltage is measured. A lot of confusion about voltage comes about because uh, you forget that it is measured between two points. Okay. So any questions about uh, voltage? questions about uh, Okay, uh, there are a number of uh, questions. One was uh, related to electromotive force and voltage. Okay, these are basically different terms for the same thing. Electromotive force is a somewhat old term, and we use the term voltage now. And somebody asked, what happens if the field is in the opposite direction or if the charge is negative? Now, if the field is in opposite direction, it will cause a potential in uh, some different way. Okay. Now, as we said, as I said earlier, we will not worry about fields. We will only work with potentials. And if the charge is negative, uh, whatever happens to the positive charge, exactly the opposite will happen to the negative charge. A positive charge falls from higher to lower potential, and a negative charge falls from lower to higher potential. Okay. Now one of the other uh, questions is, I said that uh, the potential energy gained is uh, Q times V1 minus V2. So how do we know V1? Okay. Now when you talk about potentials in a field, you will measure V1 with respect to infinity. But it doesn't matter what it's measured with respect to. Okay. So if V1 and V2 change by the same amount, uh, it doesn't matter to uh, anything. Okay. So it's only with the value of uh, V1 minus V2 that matters. Now this will become more clear when we go on to discuss uh, particular elements because we will only be discussing voltage differences across the elements. Okay. Now there are also a number of other questions on interaction between uh, charges and fields that we will not uh, worry about and we don't have to. Okay. Our uh, goal here is to do circuit analysis. So we can uh, uh, analyze circuits by staying at the level of voltages and currents without going into the fields. Okay. Now, uh, the 
there are some uh, laws that govern voltages and currents in a circuit okay now as i said i have not even put down what circuit it is these are very general laws that apply to any circuit okay this is a, you can think of them as basic properties of voltages and currents okay now one of these that talks about currents says that if you have a number of branches number of wires connected to a single point such a point is known as a node okay and these don't have to be just wires there could be some elements right now we will not worry about what they are okay now what this says is that if you measure currents flowing out of the node okay i will choose to measure the current in this direction i call this i1 i2 i3 i4 so there is a law that says i1 plus i2 plus i3 plus i4 equals 0 okay now this has nothing to do with uh, any particular circuit but this is true for any circuit okay and this i think many of you already would know this is known as kirchhoff's current law okay now uh, briefly could you uh, tell me the conditions under which this is true is this always true under any circumstances or are there some conditions okay there are a number of responses uh, i will broadly group them into always true and for linear elements or circuits and somebody said something about uh, no resistance in the wires and then somebody else said uh, charge conservation or uh, no charge accumulation and so on okay now it turns out that of course this is not correct if uh, i mean that's the reason i asked the question now this is a kind of funny answer because i have not even put down what circuit it is right i already said that these are general properties of uh, currents it has absolutely nothing to do with what circuits we apply it to okay so this is something also important for a different reason uh, i think uh, whoever answered these things are mixing up some uh, different concepts linearity refers to uh, voltage current relationships of different elements now the kirchhoff current law that i am discussing here has nothing to do with what circuit it is okay it's uh, generally true of all circuits or with some conditions as we will see and again this also uh, is something similar it says no resistance in the wires again it has absolutely nothing to do with that because uh, you could have wires and you could have elements connected to it which could be resistors okay because if you said no resistance at all then such a, th a law or such a theorem would not be very useful okay because it has to be useful for real circuits now finally we come to the main point which is that it is charge is conserved that is charge is neither uh, created nor destroyed and more uh, importantly it's not just this that is important there is no local charge 
accumulation okay that is you have current flowing out of it now if the sum is uh, more than zero that means that this charge was uh, depleting from this point and if the sum is less than zero charge is getting accumulated at this point okay neither of it is true so charge is conserved of course and also a charge is not accumulated locally in any point okay so this is the reason why this is the assumption under which kirchhoff's current law is true in fact there are conditions where it is not true uh, if there is time we can discuss those things later but now for a large number of uh, uh, circuits this is true and we can uh, uh, use kirchhoff's current law safely okay so that is true again uh, as i mentioned earlier very useful analogy for uh, thinking about currents is fluid flow okay so if you have a pipe here and then it branches off into two pipes it's very obvious i mean even without analyzing to most of you intuitively obvious that uh, if there is water flowing here and then uh, it will branch off into two and let's say water flowing here at a rate of uh, 10 liters per minute now whatever the rates here are i mean this pipe could be big and this could be small and all of that so this is flowing at some rate r1 and this is flowing at some rate r2 you know that r1 plus r2 equals 10 liters per minute okay or if i have to use the convention in for currents i took all the flow to be away from the node so i can also take r1 liters per minute flowing that way r2 liters per minute flowing this way and this way it is minus 10 liters per minute okay it's a slightly weird way of saying it but a useful way when you talk about currents i initially assume that the flow is that way but it turns out that the flow is from left to right so that means from right to left minus 10 liters per minute are flowing okay So minus 10 plus R1 plus R2 will be zero. Okay, this is something that you intuitively feel uh, is true. Okay, even without uh, knowing a great deal of uh, fluid dynamics and so on. Okay, and why does this happen? If this was not the case, water would be accumulating here, or uh, water would be drawn out of here. Okay, if we had a tank here into which water is accumulating, this could not, this need not be true. Okay, for instance, I could have water and then flowing into a tank. and then nothing coming out of it right whatever is coming here is going into the tank this is analogous to charge accumulation and we assume that such a thing is not happening as long as that's not happening the kirchhoff's current law is true the sum of all the currents flowing out of a node or equivalently sum of all currents flowing into a node will be zero okay a very useful thing and in fact a necessary thing to solve for circuits similarly there is something that governs voltages in general okay so let's say you have an electrical circuit electrical circuit means that there is some loop of uh, electrical components now we have not even discussed any element but i will take some two terminal elements 1 2 3 4 5 and 5 okay and i will measure the voltage across each one like i said voltage is potential difference between two points so here i will measure v1 in this direction and here i will measure v2 in this direction please mind the directions in which i am writing this v3 here v4 you see that i am taking all the differences in the same direction and v5 okay again this has nothing to do with the specifics of the circuit and there is a law that says that v1 plus v2 plus v3 plus v4 plus v5 equals 0 okay and this is known as kirchhoff's
so it appears that the audio was uh, broken uh, what i was talking about was the sum of voltages around the loop uh, being zero so here i have shown it for this particular circuit v1 plus v2 plus v3 plus v4 plus v5 equals zero that is sum of voltages around this closed loop is zero with all the voltages being defined with a consistent polarity okay you see that they are all in the same direction around the loop and this is known as kirchhoff voltage law the response i would like from participants is to tell me the conditions under which this is true again i have got a number of uh, responses okay now uh, some of you uh, said that it is true in a closed loop yes of course it's only the closed loop that i am discussing right here i have uh, written a loop and as i have written on the side sum of voltages around a closed loop equals zero so my question is is that violated in some condition okay now it turns out that it can be violated if there is significant time varying magnetic uh, field cutting this loop okay so this loop has certain area so this loop can enclose certain time varying magnetic fields if there are time varying magnetic fields uh, in the cutting the loop then uh, the sum of voltages doesn't have to be zero okay so again uh, all the practical situations or most of the practical situations that we encounter the time varying magnetic fields cutting this loop will be small enough cutting our loops will be small enough that we can take the sum of voltages to be exactly zero okay okay so again uh, this turns out to be true in uh, practice in a lot of cases so we can use the kirchhoff voltage law also safely okay now there are some people asking questions on what happens if uh, voltages are induced from other loops that's exactly what i'm saying that uh, if there are time varying magnetic fields there will be the sum of these things will not be zero it will be related to the rate of change of magnetic field and the area of the loop so we will not consider those conditions we will only consider the condition where the uh, flux is zero that is time varying flux cutting time varying magnetic field cutting the loop is zero okay okay so we have these two basic laws and kirchhoff's uh, kirchhoff's voltage law and kirchhoff's uh, current law one relates to voltages in a loop and one relates to currents in a loop and one of the very important things while applying this is to apply it with a consistent polarity okay so here i'll show a loop 
the loop will have some elements but i will not worry about those or maybe i'll show it with elements so that there is no confusion so if you look at this what i've done is to go this way okay if i go in a clockwise loop i always have minus first and plus next and so on okay in the direction in this direction okay i am always going in the in this direction and then i sum all the voltages it becomes zero similarly for kirchhoff's current law uh, at a node the sum of all currents flowing out of a node is zero so i suggest that right from the beginning you adopt a consistent polarity because if you make a mistake with the polarity of these things obviously you will get the wrong answer okay now one thing i have to mention about what it is i did this for uh, currents that is i told you that a current 1 ampere flowing from a to b is exactly the same as a current of uh, minus 1 ampere flowing that way and similarly if you have uh, two points let's say x and y and having a 1 volt difference in this direction is exactly the same as x and y and i'll measure y with respect to x okay the voltage in this direction being minus 1 volt okay so this is just so that you are uh, comfortable with the sign convention so again uh, for instance i could have uh, some two points and i'll write v1 this way this does not necessarily mean that this is at a higher potential than that it says that it is higher by v1 and v1 itself could be positive or negative okay okay so i think in uh, today's lecture we have uh, discussed a number of things uh, basically uh, definitions of voltage and currents and uh, the laws governing them okay now we will continue from here in the next lecture there were a couple of more questions some of them are related to frequency of the voltage and so on i will not uh, discuss those things here as they are not really relevant okay because even if uh, let's say v1 v2 v3 v4 and v5 are time varying Uh, Kirchhoff's voltage law says that at every instant of time, the sum of those things has to be zero. Okay. Similarly, for the currents, now uh, the sum of currents I1, I2, I3, I4 is zero for this particular example here. Okay. Uh, now this is true even if those currents are time varying, they could in general be time varying. At every instant of time, the sum has to be zero. Okay. So that's the meaning of Kirchhoff's voltage and current law. Now there is one very uh, interesting uh, question which is what are the circuits that own that do not obey kirchhoff voltage law or current law okay are there common examples now uh, it turns out that there are uh, there is uh, first of all uh, so there is one very common example which is basically if you are uh, if the dimensions of your circuit are uh, very large now by very large what do i mean uh, very large compared to the wavelength of the signal then these things do not hold good okay we can perhaps elaborate on this later what i mean by that is let's say i have a really long wire okay and again i will think of uh, positive charges flowing this way now always we think of charges flowing instantaneously but we know that it really moves at the speed of light okay at least it is limited to the speed of light it can only move slower than that now let's say that you drive a current 
and you reverse the direction before the current can get from here to there okay because there is always some uh, length uh, to the wire and then it takes some time to get from here to there and before that if you reverse the direction of the current so let's say you are driving a current from one side we will not worry about how to do it before it gets from here to there the charge gets from here to there you reverse it then you look at different parts of the wire they will carry they will be carrying different currents okay and a very common example of this is the antenna i think all of you are familiar with antennas which are just a single wire they are sticking out it could be sticking out of your radio or your car it's just sticking out and you will drive a current into it it looks like it's just hanging in the air and then current is going into it so clearly kirchhoff's uh, current law is not valid here what really happens is that the length of the antenna is comparable to the wavelength that is before the current reaches from one end of the antenna to the other the direction of the current driving it changes and then so uh, you have a consistent situation without kirchhoff's current law being violated okay now we will only be talking about those situations where the dimensions of the circuits are much smaller than the electrical wavelength of the uh, pre uh, signals that are driving it so in our cases kirchhoff's current law will be valid and similarly for kirchhoff's voltage law so in general these things can be violated if you have a very large circuit and large relation to the electrical wavelength or in general if you increase the frequencies of the signals okay any questions okay so there are uh, so there are some general questions which we will deal with later so in the next lecture what we will do is take some electrical uh, circuit elements which are commonly used discuss their uh, relationship between voltages and currents what we did today was to see general uh, properties of voltages and currents and their definitions okay so in the next lecture we will look at uh, some elements and then make some simple circuits out of them thank you can you tell them about the website the online courses website tell them that has the syllabus that will have the assignments posted it will have a discussion forum where we can ask questions and that will be moderated by you and the teams okay and there is an announcement also the online courses website will have the recorded lectures and it will have a forum for you to post questions where i can post answers or perhaps others can also do that and so on okay and it will also have the syllabus and assignments and all of those things okay so please consult the online forum so and this class uh, this lecture there were some glitches i think from the next lecture onwards things will be a lot smoother thank you